Well, while Pope Benedict departed with the help of a helicopter and Twitter, we got an update on the search for his successor in the age-old form of smoke signals today. Black smoke signifying a lack of cardinal consensus in the Vatican. But among the faithful in Rome, waiting for that smoke to turn white, is my co-anchor, Terry Moran, at the Papal Conclave. Terry? Greetings from Rome, Bill. What a day it was here. You could feel the weight of history in the air, the overriding suspense in this city. Who will be the next pope? Today, the secret and mysterious process to choose the next pope began. It was just really an awesome day here. Storm clouds gathered over St. Peter's Basilica, almost as if God himself wanted a somber setting for a solemn day in the history of the Catholic Church. Inside, the cardinals and symbolically all the faithful gathered for one last mass. A reminder amid the mighty spaces of St. Peter's that this whole election in the belief of Catholics is a kind of worship, a kind of prayer to pick the next pope. Outside in the square, a few pilgrims, some Romans, and the curious gathered in the afternoon gloom, waiting for this moment to begin. In solemn procession, singing the litany of the saints, the 115 cardinals who will choose the next pope left the Pauline Chapel and entered the Sistine Chapel, where Michelangelo's frescoes and their awesome responsibility awaited them. A scene of such splendor where millions come to gaze up in wonder each year, now transformed as it has been so often before into the birthplace of a pope. One of these men will be chosen. There was Angelo Scola of Milan, who the bookies have made the favorite, Peter Turkson of Ghana, Christopher Schönborn of Austria, Odilo Scherer of Brazil, all have their supporters. And the Americans running, Sean Patrick O'Malley of Boston, Timothy Dolan of New York. And there, too, among the men who will make this vote, Cardinal Justin Regali, former Archbishop of Philadelphia. His journey to Rome began nearly two weeks ago from the small city of Knoxville, Tennessee, where he's retired. And we were with him as he prepared for his second conclave. He voted in Benedict's election back in 2005. This was the pen that I used, actually, in, in voting for the Pope the last time around. What's it like being in that magnificent room? It's not just a question of talking and, 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 or trying to make it into something political. It's a fact that the, the people of God are asking God to raise up a man that will, who will remain a man and will be a worthy leader of the church. Cardinal Regali's journey began amid the faithful of Knoxville, a public prayer service with a thousand high school students and community members. He was cheered like a rock star at the airport as he headed to his plane. And at a layover in Atlanta, I met up with him. Next stop, Rome. Having just arrived, do you have in your heart and mind an idea of who you're going to vote for? This is a very serious, very serious election that involves listening, that involves weighing different uh, candidates. It can't be done before you go in and, and you decide. No, you, you have to be open to the process that's taking place. Last week, Regali joined the other cardinals to say farewell to Pope Benedict, and then they got down to the real work here. Meetings and more meetings, where the politics happen in the coffee breaks, too. The coffee breaks are, are a component. It gives us the opportunity to speak to cardinals. It gives us the opportunity to exchange our thoughts that was the backdrop. But this was the reality today, a deeper reality, they believe. And after their oath, after their prayers, the simple command. Extra omnis. Everybody out, colloquially. Everybody who's not a cardinal elector. And they left. The staff, the priests, the cameras, too. And the great doors were closed. And they were alone in there. Cardinal Regali describes the voting as a kind of fellowship in prayer. People are trying to listen to the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. They're trying to listen to the wisdom that is communicated in their brother cardinals. As a cold, damp evening fell on the Eternal City, thousands waited in St. Peter's Square, straining to see the chimney atop the Sistine Chapel, the smoke signals that signify a vote has been taken. 
Suddenly, at 7.42 p.m., there it was, black smoke, an inconclusive vote. There is no pope tonight. A plain but wholesome dinner for the Cardinals tonight, we're told. Pasta, of course, soups and some cheeses. They'll talk among themselves. They're staying in a Vatican guest house. No phones, no TVs. And then in the morning, they'll go back into the Sistine Chapel to try again.